Hey guys, it's Troy. Just got back from a family vacation. And you know what's really cool sometimes about getting away on vacation? You come back to pen mail, which I did today as I'm recording this, and came home to Magna Carta. Magna Carta is a brand of pen that I have looked at, debated whether or not I wanted to jump in on it. And after seeing and talking to uh, some pens that are owned by some friends and talk to my friends about them, um, I decided, what the heck, let's go ahead and give it a try. So I went ahead and broke down and I ordered a Magna Carta pen from Frank. Turn it around this way. Frank from Federalist Pens, uh, who I've seen Frank at pen shows, and obviously we haven't been doing pen shows here at all the past year at least because of this whole COVID thing. Uh, but i uh, been able to connect with Frank some online uh, in some Zoom calls, and you know I figured let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's go ahead and contact Frank to get this right here, the Magna Carta pen. This is the executive model in black and gold. Now, the executive I saw was also available in a rose gold. It's also in available in a black matte finish with chrome. And uh, if you've watched my channel, you know I like black and gold. Simple yet elegant combination. And uh, I tend to go with black and gold. So, there it is. It comes in a uh, very simple, plain box. Magna Carta is a brand out of India. It's a family-owned company, about eight people in the family, and they manufacture various models of pens. Like I said, this was the executive model that came in that box. So, it just slides out, and in that box, you're going to see something like this. Now, I'm going to do this because there was a standard international cartridge that did come with it, and... Uh, I don't always like to use the cartridges that come with them, so I didn't. Uh, so this is the pen. It's actually a good size, good, hefty, beautiful pen that sits on that little pillow. And along with it came a little polishing cloth that sat in the bottom of the box. So I'll go ahead and set that aside. So when you pull it out of the box, you've got this. A uh, very nice, simple yet elegant looking pen. You've got that black and gold combination that I tend to like so very much. On the cap, you've got a nice deeply grooved or engraved section. On the finial, you've got the Magna Carta logo right in on that finial. You've got a nice, fairly nice, rather uh, oblong or uh, rectangular clip, a little spring to it on that clip. And then when you go to unscrew the cap, you pull that off, and you've got a nice cap band. You've got the Magna Carta name and logo right on that cap band. Looking down inside that cap. All right, so set that down. And here, looking at the pen itself, you've got uh, a resin barrel that tapers down fairly nicely, a black, quote, precious resin. It actually says that on their website. Um, and then you've got the screw threads are right there on that resin rather than being on brass. Now, if you like sections that are metal, you're in luck. If you don't like sections that are metal, uh, then you're not going to like that so much. But you do have some nice deep grooves here on that section. you got a gold-plated or a gold-toned, at least, steel nib that it comes with and a little ebonite feed. Now, what I found is that does come out fairly nicely if you need to clean it. One of the things that they recommend right on the website is to remove the nib and the feed when you go to clean it. And I did find that it does come out fairly nicely and easily. So just a slight little twist, quick, easy action, and you've got that number six nib that comes out very nicely. And it actually goes in just as easily as it came out. So you just, boop, there it is. So there you go. You open it up, you find that you do have the cartridge converter pen, because I showed you earlier that you did have a converter that you could use with it. And, and with it, they included a Schmidt branded converter. Not just a Schmidt type, but a Schmidt branded uh, converter came with this particular pen. And it is, here's one of the things I do like about it, it is a screw type converter. So you're going to have to actually screw that out because you're going to find that 
it is threaded right there and that does come in and it does thread in place rather than just be friction fit that's one of the things I do like about some pen manufacturers because that converter is not coming out and I do like that. Obviously I have not inked this baby up yet and I haven't played with it yet but I wanted to at least give you the overview of it and see what it looked like before I ever went ahead and inked it, before I ever played with it so you can get the same first impression perhaps that I got out of it. So let's go ahead and put it back together. There you go, a nice little uh, basically half a turn to a full turn and you are in on that cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up and I'm gonna go ahead and use it for a little while before I ever do a recording. So this is gonna be a time lapse in between I do this recording and you see this video. For those of you who are actually wondering how big the Magna Carta pen is, the executive, compared to some other pens you may be familiar with, let's go ahead and show you real quick. How about a Levenger True Writer? That's a fairly common pen that many people might know about. You can see it's, uh, it's a little bigger, a little girthier. A vintage Parker 51. Not the new incarnation, but the vintage. Oh, how about a Twisby Eco? They are fairly common and ubiquitous. Diplomat Arrow. So I'll show you what that looks like size-wise. Lengthwise, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty comparable to the Magna Carta. And how about a Schaefer Pop? Something on the low end. Uh, you know, a nice little $20 pen by Schaefer that came out not too long ago. So there's a size comparison for you in case you were wondering uh, how you would have the Magna Carta stack up against some very common pens that you may be familiar with. All right, so here we are with the Magna Carta Executive, and I'm going to give you some of my honest opinions about it before I show you a writing sample. Uh, first of all, it's it's black and gold. That appeals to me. That's just my personal thing. It's a good-looking pen. It really is. I don't have any beef with the craftsmanship of, about it whatsoever. Uh, you know, you've got a uh, an acrylic or a precious resin, as they call it down here, for uh, for the barrel. You've got some nice gold tone uh, accents there, and you've got a cap band. But yes, that is the cap band. Um, now, one of the things about this is it looks like. Uh, if you're just used to the idea of uh, a nice uh, resin pen and, and a gold cap, uh, this line right here, this line here freaks me out every time I go to open up this pen. Uh, first of all, most of the weight of this particular pen seems to be in the cap, so it is a pretty heavy weighted uh, cap. Uh, it, but it's substantive, you know, it's got a lot of material there. Uh, but Every single time when I go to open it up, because it is a, a twist to open, and you do this, and it feels like, at that point, it feels like you are actually pulling the barrel off from the section, just because you've got this cap band that comes here, and that black trim right there, and it's a good long cap. So almost every time I go, it's like, oh, I'll start, Ugh, no, that's, that's not it. Uh, so as you go to pull it out, you know, you've got the, the thread right there at the uh, the end of the barrel, and there's where the section begins. It literally feels like almost every time I go to pull it apart that this is actually separating from here. It's just the way it feels when you're doing it because of the weight of the cap, because of the way that's designed. I'm not saying it's a horrible design. I'm just saying it freaks me out personally when I go to use it. So that uh, is just one of those things I had to get used to as I started to use this pen. And I've been using it an awful lot. Uh, did some letter writing sessions. Uh, I've been doing it for some carry, uh, personal carry for the past several days. And I've been keeping it on my desk. I've been playing with it an awful lot, getting to know the pen better. And quite honestly, been fighting with the pen. 
One of the things I found when I went to go write with it is this pen was not writing very well on uh, Tomoe River and it wasn't writing very well um, on some Clairefontaine paper and it was writing better on plain old ordinary notebook paper uh, but still not perfect. Now not writing well on something like uh, Rhodia or Clairefontaine is not unusual for a fountain pen so I didn't flip out over that. Um, but what I did do is I checked time alignment and it was just a little bit off. So I got to playing with it some and unfortunately at first it just made it worse. <laughs> so it started to write fairly scratchy even on normal notebook paper. And it started and it was skipping. So every time so often there would be a stroke and it would be a skip, a skip, a skip as I was uh, as I was writing. It was getting extremely frustrating. So I went ahead and uh, fought with it and fought with it and fought with it. Now, keep in mind um, with that time alignment the way it was, it was actually still a very smooth writing pen. It just skipped every so often until it wasn't smooth when I made a time adjustment to it. So, you know, and it's not something you would see unless you had a little loop and you were actually looking uh, at it magnified. So I kept playing with it and I kept playing with it and I kept fighting with it. As a matter of fact, you can still see um, the ink leftovers on my thumbs. Uh, for, and from me having uh, played with it, most of the ink has uh, gone off my fingers, uh, but on my thumbs, you, uh, right at the thumbnail, I still got a lot of the ink that was left over from me fighting with this nib. And I, it wasn't until like late yesterday that I finally got the nib to where it was in much better alignment and started to write much, much better. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. I went ahead and inked it up with... Uh, an ink sample that I got when I ordered this pen from Federalist Pens, the Colorverse Stars in Stripes. So it's a blue ink, which is a little departure from me for what I normally have. In a black pen, I tend to put black ink. That's just one of those things. Uh, so, in here, I'm going to not flip out as I go ahead and open that up. And let's go ahead and write with it. So this is the Magna Carta Executive. It's a very smooth writing pen. You do hear just a little tiny bit of feedback, uh, but also you, you notice this is a medium nib, but boy, is it got like a broad. I actually took a broad pen. I was writing a letter to a friend of mine and I used this pen and then I used a broad nib right next to it and you could really see that the broad nib actually seemed to be narrower than this nib right here. This is a very wet, very broad medium nib. So, no matter, see it where I still got a little bit of skip there? That's what I was getting all the time, and I kept playing with it, and so it was better. It, I mean, when I checked time alignment as of when I went to go to bed last night, it was actually looking pretty good. But I still have a few skips here or there that's really, see, like that, I just ran across there. So, it, this particular paper, um, you know, it, it skips, and... I started writing with it last night on that Clairefontaine pad that was giving me a whole lot of skips and it actually was doing pretty good without skipping at all. Uh, and here on this pad here, you see where I've got right there, I've got some skip. So I'm going to have to fight with this one possibly some more. So for the most part, it, it does fairly well. I've, I've taken out that feed, that nib, I've played with them, and I've tried putting things back together properly. So overall, what are my thoughts on the Magna Carta? Well, it's uh, online. They sell these for 100 bucks on the Magna Carta website. Uh, MSRP, uh, I guess, would be similar, but uh, I know that local sellers are selling Magna Carta in various uh, incarnations, various models, for about 120 US dollars. Uh, whereas directly on the Magna Carta website, it seems to be about 100 Now, I don't know what shipping is to get them from India all the way here to the United States, uh, but I did get this one actually on 
clearance. Uh, and it was the last one of this particular model uh, at Federalist Pens, and I got this for about $100, about $99. Plus, I used a discount code on top of that. Now, I don't have a discount code of my own with Federalist Pens, um, but um, just maybe I'll put that down in the description of the video below, so um, you can go visit there as well. So there you go. Um, it It's a pen that I've been using and will be using a lot more. Um, I mean, I like the design of it. I like the way it looks. Uh, it's a family-owned business. Um, I don't know if this nib is representative of all of their nibs and the quality and the time alignment issues that I've had with it. Um, I wouldn't mind trying some other Magna Carta pens, only because I do like the craftsmanship of the pen itself. It's a good hefty pen. It feels substantive. It feels like it's decent quality when you go to use it. I like the fact that this is an executive model uh, by name and by look. So that actually works for me. So there you go. My impressions and my experience thus far with Magna Carta. And, uh, you know, maybe Magna Carta will do you well. Maybe uh, you'll get a nib that writes... Uh, out of perfect alignment when you get it. I will say, like I said, even with a slightly out of alignment nib, apparently, even with the skipping issues that I've been having with this particular nib, uh, it's actually been writing smoothly. So I don't know what to tell you um, beyond that because I haven't got any other Magna Cartas for comparison and reference. <laughs>